Wow. The last one stays a lot as well like a pressure. But I'm so happy you guys stayed around for more than two hours. And I promise, after my TED talk, you guys can have it a go and then have food. <laughs> so, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I want to talk to you about body language and how you can use it to project power, confidence, and much more. Body language, and more importantly, poetry demonstrates to others who you are. It shapes us, it defines us. I would love to start with a question. When you first communicated with a stranger, what do you notice about him? Their outfit? The poster doing it exchange? Or do you make eye contact with them? A person's outfit creates the first impression and a poster conveys confidence during communication. Making eye contact is also excuse confidence by building through connection and showing focus. Effective communication, which makes the other person feel at ease, is a skill that can be developed. Based on my past social experiences, I have identified two main principles of effective communication with others. First, empathy development. It's about understanding the other person's life situation as much as possible and communicating in a manner that makes both parties feel comfortable. Second, the win-win approach. Communicate confidently and assuring that your message is perceived as valuable by the other person while also showcasing your own value. Reading other thoughts is challenging, but observing the body language can provide indirect insight into the feelings. The details can be uncovered by asking questions, paying attention to tone and context, and interpreting non-verbal cues. Sometimes we should consider the question as well. Is the person's behavior response? When they are speaking, are they thinking about the environment they are in? It's possible that a person may be hesitant to speak up due to fear, lack of ideas or courage. A positive gesture like a nod of agreement, a big thumbs up or an encouragement can boost their confidence and make them more resilient. Communicating with introverts may require sensitivity. They may be introspective and reserved, holding back their thoughts. A communicator who can create the comfortable atmosphere and gently encourage expression can help introverts open up. The confidence of an encourager can also force the great opportunities to learn many ideas from an introvert who otherwise might have left those on set. In interpersonal relationships, it's common to question why others perceive us differently than we imagine to avoid misinterpretation. Effective communication with diverse personalities is key in creating the desired impression. I believe empathy and confidence are interdependent. Confidence in myself allows for the development of empathy as one is able to understand and relate to the experiences and emotions of others. Also, empathy inspires us to think in a manner that helps the other person feel valued and understood. When I was an international student studying journalism in the UK, I noticed many Indian classmates had advantage because English was a mother tongue. And yet, I carefully prioritized the empathy we speaking with my interviewees, despite her strong linguistic abilities. That my classmate felt nervous before each interview, worried about accurately capturing the message from the interviewee. She told me one day, you are the competitive person, CEC, but you also take care of others. This reminded me of why I made such an impression on her. I would first ask my interviewees a state of mind and ease and consider how we as journalists could guide them to express more about their feelings. And our teamwork in this approach made them understand the importance of empathy in interviews instead of just focusing on finding interesting stories and feeling unsure in communication. Humans resemble animal behavior in dominant displays. Confident, powerful individuals in the room all have body body language, such as legs apart, leaning forward, gesturing with wide arms. They expert excluded presses by putting their feet up on the table, hands behind their head, elbows out. This confidence in their power allows them to freely expand their body language. The posture of the restless person contrasts with confident ones, 
They shrink the lines, hunching over, standing with feet close together, and holding the thighs arm directed around the chest. They often hide in corners, avoid the attention and questions. This type of body language goes unnoticed. Studies have uncovered that maintaining the confident body posture can make you feel more powerful. Those who adopted power posture have the linked to the dominance, competitiveness, rise alliance, leadership ability, and better resistance to illness. On the other hand, those who adopted power posture but lack actual power tend to be less likely to take bold risks for the big win. So for those on the floor, examine your current sitting posture. Reflect on how you typically hold a body at a desk, during meetings or while conversing. Consider what the message your body language, including postures, signs, and gestures, conveys to others in the room. Additionally, thinking about the messages it sends to your own brain. Maintaining a confident body posture is not reflected psychologically and behaviorally, but also causes changes physiologically. So people are probably gonna wonder. What does the power exactly mean here? Power is not defined by one's personal reputation, but rather by the role they play in another person's story. For instance, imagine searching for the pocket spot and come across a stranger about to drive away from only available space. At that moment, being on time is important to you, but for the stranger, he is capable of making a phone call without worry and leaving you to wait. As this going is simply to drive away. This puts him in control of the situation and empowers him. In this case, your desire to secure the spot and what time requires you to establish a connection with the driver. I am in content founded of the private company while conducting my graduation project. It was her first time being interviewed, so obviously she was understandably nervous, unsure of how to position her hands. I noticed the nervousness and calmly told her to approach the interview as a casual conversation with me. I think everybody here can see through the rest of the interview that her body language is becoming more confident. Let's have a look then. Do you know like some companies that just like lease the electric cars? Yes, there is a plan. Yes. Yeah, they, or like if you have the opportunities, like if you don't have an electric car right now, mm. are you going to buy that directly to buy the electric cars or are you going to rent the electric car where you need it? Uh, good question. I suppose it's, it's, it depends where you are and what you want to get to. If you're trying to do between here and London, you'd probably take your petrol. Because you're a bit, ooh, will I get there? You know. But if you said I'm doing a short journey and I want something local, then I would say get an electric car. Okay, thank you. So, those in public, it's the responsibility to lead by the example, as long as constant scrutiny and a power fuse their determination. To be a valuable and useful member of society, it's important to demonstrate that how you can help others stay engaged and excel. And this is the only way to truly show others who you are. As a journalist, Conducting interviews is a key part of my job responsibilities and all of us engage in communication with others daily. We likely encounter people from diverse backgrounds in the future. When words are not sufficient, use non-verbal cues to convey your message. Be considerate towards those you meet as it always tells positive results. Make others feel at ease, expert confidence and aim to be a valuable contributor to society. Thank you for your time today. I hope we've been able to impart at least some insight to you guys how to post real body language. Thank you.